The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this morning at Zion Lutheran. We are grateful for the Holy Spirit's work in calling and gathering us all together as a community of faith and around Christ's words of grace and mercy to us. And so we look forward to hearing those words today. Um, we're glad to have you with us this morning. If you're a guest or visitor with us today, we want to extend a special welcome to you and hope very much that you feel at home with us as you worship. And for those joining us online, we want to welcome you as well and uh, just know that even if you are not in this place, you are very much a part of this community of faith and we're glad to have you worshiping along with us uh, this morning as well. A couple of things I want to highlight for you all today. First of all, happy Father's Day uh, to all those fathers and to those who provide fatherly uh, guidance and wisdom and uh, company. We, uh, we are grateful for the blessing that you are to us and to others, and so we wish you a very happy Father's Day and hope you get a chance to celebrate that today. We have uh, updated some COVID uh, protocols as of our last council meeting, which was last week. And we have pretty much um, taken, uh, lifted all of our COVID restrictions, all of our COVID protocols. There are a couple minor things here and there that you might notice, uh, but for the most part, we have lifted our COVID restrictions. So we no longer have any seating capacities um, in the church, whether that's here in the sanctuary or the fellowship hall. We are allowing meals and food and beverages now. Um, we are not requiring masks of, of any kind, but we do encourage those who are still unvaccinated or who have compromised health uh, to continue wearing a mask at your discretion. Um, so this is really good news. We're really grateful for uh, the way that things have gone over recent weeks, for vaccination rates to continue to go up um, for that vaccine. We're grateful for that and for the low case rate that we have right now. Um, so we're grateful for those things and glad that we can be back to pretty close to, to pre-COVID normal circumstances for now. And we certainly hope and pray that that continues. We are in the process of doing some updating to our youth room and doing a little refresh and makeover. And so in the process of doing that, we're going to get some new furniture for the youth room. So we're getting rid of some of the old furniture that we currently have. If you're interested in taking that off of our hands and in the process making a donation for those uh, pieces of furniture, then you are invited to head up to the youth room at some point um, and take a look at the couches that we have up there. If you would like one and you'd like to buy one of those from us, we will be happy <laughs> to let you do that. And uh, like I said, those proceeds then will go toward the cost of the new furniture that will go into that room. Um, so you are welcome at any time to go up, well, not right now, stay here, but <laughs> after the service you can go up and take a look if you want to. We also have uh, scheduled a time of fellowship and saying thank you to Pastor Tim and Nancy as Pastor Tim's time with us as visitation minister has come to an end and they are headed uh, to uh, retirement, the land of retirement, right? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> And so we will say thank you and give a blessing here at the end of our worship service this morning, but then you are invited to head to the fellowship hall after worship and have a time just to fellowship and saying your thank yous to, to them and wishing them well um, as they head out of Aberdeen uh, in the next few weeks. So we invite you to do that. All right, the other announcements, I, I just encourage you to take home with you and read over so that you know what's happening in the life of our congregation. As we begin worship, we uh, sing our gathering hymn, which is number 756, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. And I have to check, if somebody could click on that uh, screen for me when you get a chance, that one's not on, but these are, so we're good.
We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin. We cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you, the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy people of God, called through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and enlightened by the Holy Spirit, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. God of promise, Abraham scoffed and Sarah laughed when they were told of your plans for them and their family. Yet you remained faithful to your promise and gave them a son, Isaac. Help us to trust in your promises for our lives and to live according to your will. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our first reading. Our first, our first reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near them. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the group. He said, My Lord! If I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd, 
took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, they're in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him, and Abraham circum circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now, Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, there are a couple of good reasons to tell some jokes today. First, it's Father's Day, of course, so why not hear some good dad jokes, right? And now, you know the ones I'm talking about, right? They're the ones that just make you groan, <laughs> right? And second, laughter is a key part of the story we're hearing today. So I have a couple of jokes for you. Here goes. And these are Noah jokes, not Abraham ones. I couldn't find any Abraham jokes. But here's the first one. Do you need an ark? I know a guy. <laughs> right? Takes a second. Uh, and this one, why didn't Noah go fishing that often? He only had two worms. <laughs> That's even more of a dad joke, isn't it? <laughs> and this one, it's not really a joke, but it's kind of a funny little story. So there's a pastor getting ready to start the service, but can't get the mic to work. And uh, she says, there's something wrong with this mic. And the congregation, of course, responds, and also with you. I don't use that as an example of what to do, <laughs> just a funny story. And then this one is just a purely funny little anecdote. Uh, a pastor is speaking to a group of second graders, and they were talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And one student asked, well, what did Jesus say right after he came out of the grave? And the pastor had to say, well, the Gospels don't really tell us what he said at that point. But one little girl was convinced she knew the answer, and she shot up her hand and said, I know what he said. He said, ta-da, <laughs> which I think I need to work into an Easter morning sermon at some point. Well, we are now in our third week of our summer worship series on stories worth revisiting. And these are indeed stories that are worth telling and hearing again, or even for the first time, as the case may be. They are stories that have been told for a long, long time and over and over again. But I want to make something kind of clear about them. These are not stories about heroes of the Bible. They're stories about people in the Bible, but not about heroes. 
because the Bible isn't really about heroes at all. And if there's anything that will become clear in all of these stories, it's that God chooses to work in and through very flawed human beings. Because these stories, and really the Bible as a whole, isn't about how God is pleased with us when we do the right thing. The whole Bible story, the overarching Bible story, is about God meeting us in the low places, even in our failures and unfaithfulness, and maybe especially there. And so what we will see in all these stories that it's really about God's faithfulness to us, not about what we do for God. If we're going to find a hero in the Bible, that hero is God. Lutheran writer Bonnie Petroshek wrote this in an online article. She said, It is a relief for me to revisit the Old Testament stories and see them for what they really are, the long trail of God's great faithfulness in the face of the great unfaithfulness of these men and women, this trail which stretches from the beginning of creation to me. Now, let me say that again, because I think it's really important. She says, it's a relief for me to revisit the Old Testament stories and see them for what they really are, this long trail of God's great faithfulness in the face of the great unfaithfulness of these men and women. And that's a trail that stretches from the beginning of creation to me. It's a relief to hear this again and again because we lose sight of it all the time. We forget that this is actually who God is. It is God's very character to be faithful to you and me at all costs. And that depends not one bit on how faithful we are to God. So today we have the story of Abraham and Sarah. And when we meet them in, in this point in the story, they have been waiting and waiting and waiting for God to keep his promise of a child to them. Now, last week, we heard about God's call to Abraham, who was then actually called Abram. God changes the names of Abraham and Sarah uh, through this story, or at the midpoint in this story. So then he was called Abram. And God called Abram to uproot his family and go to this new land that God was promising to them. But land wasn't the only thing that he promised. He also promised that Abram's descendants would inherit that land, and that the families of all the earth would be blessed through them. But there was a problem with all of this, of course. Abram couldn't possibly have any descendants because his wife Sarah, then called Sarai, couldn't have children. But that was the other promise, that Sarai would indeed become a mother, and through her, Abram and Sarai would be the parents of an entire nation. But years pass, and this promise does not yet come to be. And of course, as Abram and Sarai grow older, their hope in God keeping this promise grows dimmer all the time. Because with each passing day and month and year, it grows more and more improbable that Sarai could have a child. So Abram needs some reminding about this promise. He's losing hope. And so God one day calls Abram out to look at the night sky. And he tells Abram, look at all these stars. Try counting these stars. And of course, Abram can't. And that is the point. This is how big your family will be, God tells Abram. Don't lose hope. I will make this happen. And these children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be a blessing to the whole world. And here's the tension then that Abram and Sarai live in, and it's the tension we all live in all the time, which is the difference between our lived experience and the circumstances that we may be going through at any given time and the promise that God makes to us. Everything in Abram and Sarai's experience, all that they knew to be true in their lives, spoke to the opposite of what God had promised to them. And that leads to them even trying to take matters into their own hands, trying to 
control or have some kind of control over this promise. Sarai had serious doubts that God would actually come through or even be able to fulfill his promise. And so she gave her maidservant, Hagar, to Abram so that they could bear a child together. But that's not what God had promised. That wasn't the son, the child that God said would come to Sarah. And so when we get to Sarah and Abraham in the story today, it's been a while, a long while since God made the promise. And those years have dragged on and on. And with them, the physical, biological reality of those aging bodies had sort of overwhelmed them. At this point, there is no way, no reasonable way, anyway, that this child could come about. And so they are resigned to this fate. And that is when God shows up. The Lord appeared to Abraham, the text says, appearing as a person in this sort of strange trio of travelers and being the good host that his culture demands of him, Abraham gives them rest and sets a fine meal before them, prepared by Sarah. And having found this rather unique way of coming to Abraham and Sarah, the Lord repeats the promise given all those years ago. Sarah will have a son. In fact, he will be here within the year. And Sarah, off inside the tent, hears this and laughs. Now, this is not the kind of laughter that comes after a good joke or a laugh from telling great stories and spending time with your closest friends and family. This is a laugh of scoffing and despair. The laugh that says, yeah, right, you can't possibly be serious. It's the laugh of disbelief and pain. Well, the Lord hears Sarah and asks, why did she laugh? Why did she not believe me? And then we get this great question. And maybe it's the best question in the entire Bible. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? which also means, is anything too difficult for the Lord? Because that's who we're dealing with here. Not human abilities, not human faithfulness, but God's. And so the question isn't so much of a question, an open-ended question, as it is a promise made to us, because the answer is obvious, isn't it? The answer is no. The only real no that God gives is actually a yes. Anything is possible with God. But Sarah is not yet living in confidence in God's word. She's still living in fear. And she denies that she laughed. And I love the Lord's response. Oh, yes, you did laugh. And can't you just see the look on his face, right? It's the one your mom and dad always gave you when you tried to pull one over on them, right? The, are you kidding me with this look? Maybe you're really good at giving that to your kids. And so it sounds like Sarah is going to be in trouble. And I think that it's setting us up to expect that she's going to suffer some kind of punishment for her disbelief or be paid back for not, uh, for her disdain of the promise. And that's what makes God's actual response to her all the more remarkable because God's response to Sarah isn't to scold her or deride her it's not to punish her for losing faith in God's word or for doubting it says the Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised I love this Because the way that we deal with circumstances or people is very different, right? We deal with things by confronting them, managing them, handling them, uh, sometimes even diffusing or de-escalating them. But God's way to deal with us is by making life-giving promises to us and then keeping them. He deals with Sarah by remaining faithful to the promise he gave her and Abraham in the beginning. And so she did, indeed, conceive and bear a son. And that makes Sarah laugh again. But this time, 
It's laughter that has been transformed by God. God bringing laughter of deep and true joy. The laughter of someone who just can't believe that this is really true. It feels too good to be true. And yet, here is this promised child. Evidently, nothing is too wonderful for God. And now Sarah doesn't just laugh to herself, but now this is laughter that she shares and experiences with others. Really what God had done all of those years that Sarah and Abraham were waiting was to bring them to this point of human impossibility because that's exactly where God's promise comes to us when it's out of our hands entirely, when we can't make it happen under our own power, when it feels like something has died, a dream, a hope, a little piece of us. This is why it's so important that we know that God deals with us through promise, not according to our circumstances or our choices or how good we are at following Jesus. Now, it's no mere coincidence that this story centers around this promise of a son because through that son, Isaac, and Isaac means laughter, came another son, God's own self entering into our world, our frail human flesh. Isaac is the son given purely by grace until, that is, Jesus Christ, the son of God, comes along, the next son given entirely by grace. This son is how God has continued chasing after you and me, so that even when we are turning and walking away from God in Christ, God is always running to you, coming to you up close and personal to deliver his promise to you and to give you a future even when you can't see one. Is anything too wonderful or too difficult or impossible for God? Not a chance. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our hymn of the day, O God Who Gives Us Life. This is from our new hymnal, so it's not in your red hymnals, uh, but we have it printed for you in the bulletin and up on the screen. And we will stand on the last verse.
the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you without shaking hands just yet to uh, turn to your neighbors and give a peace sign or a wave, a sign of God's peace and greeting. And when you're finished, you may be seated. In the joy and peace that we are given through the cross of Jesus Christ, we ask you to consider your gifts to Zion that will strengthen our ministry and our mission together. You can give online, in the mail, or by dropping your offering in the basket that's located at the back of the sanctuary as you leave today. Thank you for continuing to support the work of Christ through this congregation. The act of offering is an act of worship wherever and whenever it is done. Please stand. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have blessed us with our bodies, our minds, our heart, our community, and the resources of this earth. Lead us and guide us to use these gifts in accordance with your will, for the sake of the one who is with us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together in confidence in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is host of this meal, and you are welcome at his table. I invite you to be seated. We will 
were to have one side of the, con of the sanctuary uh, commune first, so watch for the direction of uh, the usher. I believe it'll be this side first and then this side next.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated again, except for two of you, Pastor Tim and Nancy, I invite you to come forward as we have a blessing for you. And maybe, uh, Pastor Tim, if you want to give just a really brief little indication of what's next for you both. <laughs> oh, it's goodbyes are really hard for me, and I don't know exactly what's next for us. We were looking at maybe Rapid City or maybe Rochester, Minnesota. It looks like it'll be Rochester, Minnesota, but I don't know for sure what's in Rochester, Minnesota. So we'll be living with Nancy's sister for a while in Hastings, Minnesota. I don't know how we're going to fit in her house. I think, um, like I've said many times, that if they set up television cameras in the house and record it, it could make a good um, reality TV show with lots of laughs. <laughs> we'll be watching <laughs> but, for that. Yeah, that would be really good. Zion has been a real blessing to me and to Nancy and to many people in the community. We live in a time where people are becoming more disconnected. It's become a theme of my life to just celebrate the connections. And Zion is an amazing church of connections. And what Pastor has said today is true. No matter how old we are, we still give birth to the wonderful grace of the love of God in our community through the connections we have here. Many of us are Sarah's in the world, laughing with God's great goodness and love and grace to us. Zion is a really special church that we will never have out of our hearts. So don't go away yet. Stay with us. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd like to read a passage from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. When you two came to this congregation, we rejoiced to welcome you into the mission that we share as the people of God. And God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. And so I'd like to pray this prayer for you. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of these, your servants, Pastor Tim and Nancy, who have enriched this congregation and shared their gifts with us. And now we pray, Lord, that you bless and preserve them at this time of transition. Day by day, guide them and give them what is needed, and friends to cheer their way, and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling them. By your Holy Spirit, be present in their pilgrimage, that they may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You are very welcome, and we are, uh, want to celebrate with you and say thank you to you, so be sure to, again, head over to the Fellowship Hall after uh, worship, and you will be able to do that as well. Yes, it's a good time to do that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and I invite you all to stand as you receive this uh, blessing, this benediction as you go into your week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with his grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing together our sending hymn, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, which is hymn number 763.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.